I was always in discomfort from the time I was... My first memories are of a stomachache and not being able to digest my food. And so I knew it was food, and, and told, I told and the told doctors. Doctor? Yeah. I went to sick kids and I said, you know what? If Michaela eats oranges, her toe swells. And they were like, oh yeah. And they kind of wrote it down, but they were not interested. So, you know, Jordan and I, you guys, we're at home and we whisper, good. we whisper to each other, you know what? I think we're getting younger. I mean, that doesn't happen. Like gum disease doesn't get better. Arthritis doesn't just go away. Depression doesn't just Live. evaporate. I have a normal life for the first time in my life. Hi, Ellen. Hello. Good to see you again. Great to be seen. <laughs> so we met, uh, might have been a year ago. It was a while ago. I did a podcast with Reverend Helen Orr. Um, and we talked, I talked to her, I interviewed Helen. But today we're going to do something a little different. Helen's going to interview me. I suggested that maybe Helen start a podcast. She doesn't have one yet. And, I, and then, so that's how it started. It was like, why don't you interview me? And she was like, yeah, maybe I could do that. And then we thought about what we'd talk about. And so I think Helen will introduce what we're going to talk about. And we'll go from there, see where it goes. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, Tammy. Uh, yes, yeah, so basically, I am very interested in health and the fact that you and Jordan and your whole family have radically changed your diet was something I found really interesting because, um, as you know, you came to stay with me and we brought in the air fryers and the meat and, you know, I was like, wow, this is this is a new way of doing things and you are both so healthy and I'd never met anybody who just ate, ate meat and I thought you couldn't live like that, but it turns out you can live very well like that. Um, so I wanted to ask you a bit about that, but also about your faith journey, because obviously we're both Christians mm -hmm. and how that has fed into your holistic approach to life. Um, so I think I wanted to start with, um, yeah, start with a little bit of background. My mother was a doctor. Um, and that made me realize she was a GP, a general practitioner, that she knew some things but doctors don't know everything. Doctors are not God. And I realized that when I was eight and I nearly died of dysentery. And that got me to thinking about what we put in our bodies and what foods. And, and I, I know you've been on your own journey. So I just wanted to start up. When did you start thinking out of the box um, beyond just what the doctors were telling you? Let's start mm -hmm. with that. Okay. So I'll start back a long ways. I was always in discomfort from the time I was... My first memories are of a stomachache and not being able to digest my food. That, mm -hmm. That's what I remember f from being just a wee little kid. So I was always, I always knew it was something I was putting in my body. Mm -hmm. So actually I was given a gift of <laughs> a very direct causal relationship. Mm -hmm. Because lots of things that have come from this diet, we had no idea were impacted by diet. Whereas I was always thinking, Diet has something to do with it. But I had no idea what it might be. And I knew I know my mother took me to the doctor once when I was maybe in middle school. I can't remember. I might have been in elementary school. And the doctor, he, he just, he didn't have any help. There was no help there. Mm. And mom didn't know what to do about it. And so we just lived and ate a North American diet. And Can you explain to the listeners what a North American diet is? Well, you know, uh, boxed cereal in the morning with cow's milk. Um, my mom made bread, so we had bread. She used quick rising yeast when I was young, so we had bread. She made cinnamon buns. She kept them in the freezer. I had one every day, at least one. I loved my cinnamon buns, and I, I loved my bread. Um we didn't always have dessert after dinner, you know, because we, we'd come home at lunch, we'd have Campbell's soup and crackers and a sandwich, probably a grilled cheese sandwich for lunch. And then for supper, mom was, she worked, so she would always put something in the oven so we'd have a roast or something with potatoes and a vegetable. Uh, we didn't often have dessert, so which was kind of surprising because a lot of families do, they ha often have dessert. We didn't have dessert often. We had cakes on birthdays. We never had any pop in the house. Uh, 
we never had any butter because my mother was born in a um, in an impoverished state. I would say uh, her mom worked as a nurse's aide, and her father was a farmer, but not a very successful one. And they lived on a farm, uh, and there were three or four kids, and they lived in what you would say is about the size of a garage. So they were. My father said when he first went out to take my mother out. He had to duck to get into the house. So it was just a little place. Wow. But they, my mom used to ride to school on bareback in the winter in Alberta. And then she'd go into the forest and take off of take off all of the, the bloomers and the long johns and everything before she went into school so that she appeared to be, you know, they never had any shoes till they were seven. Wow. So So she grew up and the food that was in our house was always minimal. It was, and she cooked everything herself. We had a vegetable garden and we had fruit trees in northern Alberta. You know, we had apples. Uh, mostly we had berries, st- strawberries, raspberries. And we didn't really have anything packaged at all. So, really, what we thought healthy. We, our milk, we didn't have, we didn't get. Fresh milk. We made our milk out of powder. We had powdered milk. Wow. So it was blue. And in fact, I think I could digest that better, <laughs> actually, because cause in, in fact, I, you know, I ended up finding out later in life I had celiac disease. So really dairy and gluten were not my friends. Yeah. And that's really, I loved cinnamon toast every night when I was watching TV with my dad. We always had orange juice and cinnamon toast or orange juice and popcorn when we watched TV at night. And I, I, I early on, I couldn't digest corn anymore. And corn is a hard thing to digest. But I think because I had such trouble with my digestion that the foods that are hardest to digest were the ones that gave me the most trouble. But, you know, I love, we had a red cap dairy across the school ground, and we'd go over there with 10 cents, and we'd buy uh, an ice cream cone, and um, we'd buy lick maids We used to have these things, straws full of, full of sugar that we would have, and we went there every day, I think, with a dime to get what we could. And so we, we had a lot, lot of sugar, mm. um, we had a lot of sugar. We'd go there and then swing on the swings and eat our candy every day. Right. And, and so I, I had a, that's a North American diet really is, yep. you know, not, not a bad one either. I mean, these days there's so much packaged food yeah. and people don't always eat together anymore. So there's fast food a lot. And we didn't even have a Burger King. We had a Burger King, I think, when I was a teenager there, a Burger King came into town. That was the first fast food place I'd ever seen. And so... And presumably you didn't go there very often. It was like a sort of special occasion. We went there. We, you know, we'd go to the... I remember with a friend of mine, we'd go for French fries and and uh, I'd have an orange soda. I never had Coke either. Mum never brought Coke into the house. So really, she tried very hard. We had margarine instead of butter. I mean, she really, they were telling her that fat wasn't any good. Yeah. Right? That was the idea. Yeah. Don't want any saturated fats, you know. Yeah. They'll give you a heart attack. Flora, man, we have. Right? That was, <laughs> you, yep. yeah. And so that was the narrative that they fed us. Mm-hmm. And, and the food pyramid, of course, you know, with all these grains at the bottom and meat right at the top, like hardly any meat at all. That was the idea. And of course, she was trying hard to feed us the way that she was supposed to. But it was a disaster for me. Hmm. You so know? when did you realize that diet, that, well, that doctors might not know all the answers and that actually they don't, because my mother as a GP said they never taught them nutrition, which seems crazy. But I mean, the word disease is dis-ease. So it's, you obviously knew there was something wrong. You had those stomach aches. Yeah. So when did you start to think, well, I could do something different. I don't have to listen to the doctors saying I can't do anything. There might be, when did that happen? Why I did? always thought doctors knew what they were doing. And I thought they, if I knew the right doctor to ask, I could get an answer. Mm. I always thought that, mm. like for a very long time. Um, I did take it into my own hands to figure out what was wrong with me, though, because I couldn't find any answers in the medical system. Mm. But I always, I wasn't a research scientist. Uh, That wasn't, 
that wasn't something that I was trained to do. I, I, I didn't have anybody around me who did that either or taught me how to do that. So I didn't know anything about that. So presumably, though, you were diagnosed because you said you've No, got... I wasn't diagnosed. So you, how did that happen? How did you think, oh, I've got this, oh, I'm this? You... Well, you know, Michaela was really sick, so my daughter was very sick. Yeah. Um, she, was, she was a healthy little baby, really calm, really lovely little baby, slept very well, ate very well. Uh, when she was crawling around, she listened very well, you know, so she was just somebody who was uh, Michaela Alexis... Uh, we looked up what the names meant, and it was Ale- Michaela Alexis, godlike helper, and that's Aww. what what that's what she was like. She was just uh, a dream baby, really. Uh, but I think when we began to feed her, she probably started to have troubles because you know how you can take your kids and put them on your shoulders, walk around. Jordan did that one day and put her down, and she cried. So it was probably she already had arthritis in her hips. Wow! From the time she was just this little thing, but we never found diagnosis until she was seven. Right. And by then, I took her to Sick Kids Hospital and a rheumatologist came down. I took her to emergency finally. I was told that, because none of the doctors knew what was wrong with her. They said, just take her to emergency next time she's feeling bad. And I did, and a rheumatologist came down and um, they manipulate the joints to see if there's inflammation in them. And she had... Uh, affected joints in 38 joints, really everywhere but her spine. Wow. She was just riddled with inflammation by the time she was seven. And uh, fortunately, at least because we were looking at pharmaceuticals to treat her problems, a new drug called Etanercept came out. It was a biological medication. She was on methotrexate at the beginning, which is a drug that was developed for cancer, Mm -hmm. but worked to... Uh, limit the uh, inflammation in the body. Etanercept was a biological, so it actually was uh, working to um, stop the autoimmune response that the immune system was. So it really dampened her immune system. So then she was sick all the time. She would catch whatever came into the school. So just this little kid, you know, and people send their kids to school with... They used to before COVID anyway, mm. sent their kids to school no matter how they felt. Really? Yeah. You, <laughs> if the kid, if they could get their kid out of bed. You out of the right? door. Yeah, send yeah, them out of yeah, school. Yeah, and fair enough, right? Yeah. Because you don't want your kid staying home for every sniffle. No. You don't want to be that mother who's no. who's coddling them so much that they did never leave their room they until they're out. 55 years old, right? Yeah. So yeah. you don't want that. So you want your kids to leave and you want your kids to go. But Michaela would go to school. And there'd be a kid with a cold, and Michaela would get a cold, but it wouldn't be a cold. It would be pneumonia. Uh, and so every winter she had pneumonia. Wow. And uh, it was brutal, really. And I knew it was food, right? Because if she ate oranges, her toe would swell. And so I knew it was food. And, told, and I told and the told doctors. Doctor? Yeah. I went to sick kids, and I said, you know what? If Michaela eats oranges, her toe swells. And they were like, oh, yeah. And they kind of wrote it down, but they were not interested. Mm-hmm. There was no help there. So what did I do instead? I went and I took her to naturopaths. Mm-hmm. I took her to every everybody I could find in Toronto that might know something. Uh, I had. I ended up eventually having everybody in the family do food sensitivity testing. So we had these long lists of foods, I and they those. were either green or, or orange or uh, red. And the red ones you definitely didn't eat. The yellow ones or the orange ones, it was iffy, and the only ones you could eat were green. Michaela's came back all red. Whoa. And we thought, no way. That can't be. What do you mean she can't eat anything? This this just doesn't work. That's what Jordan was like. This doesn't work. I can imagine. (laughs) You can imagine. Skepticism. Oh, these people don't know what they're doing. And I was like, but I was just so desperate. I was finding answers, you know. And so I did find that clue there. That was a clue. Yeah. And I don't know how old Michaela was there. She might have been, I don't know, 12. But I gave up gluten when she was nine. You and said and that helped your memory straight away. You well, I was falling asleep all the time. Yeah. And, you know, it, it got worse, right? So when I was a child, I wouldn't fall asleep all the time. Yeah. But when I was a teenager, I can remember we got a McDonald's in 
Grand Prairie, which is 70 miles away. And mm -hmm. I was with my friends. We're out driving. And we went to McDonald's and got a burger. And we ate the burger. By the time we got outside, uh, I had to find a bathroom. So wow. right, it just, the food went right through me. And I was so weak, I couldn't open the door. Oh. Like it would just, it, it not, so, and then eventually after that, I started actually passing out. So I was getting, I went from it causing tremendous weakness to I would want to go for a walk. And I can remember one day I was sitting, putting my shoes on and I fell asleep, just putting my shoes on. And then I was so used to it, you know, I'd wake up and I'd put my coat on and go out the door. So I was just passing out all the time when my kids were really, really young. I would lay on the couch with them and have them play around me. I had no energy. You know, Quite dangerous, actually. Oh, it was terrible. Uh, you know, I was just, I was really incapacitated, really. By the time I was probably 35. Okay. And I spent so much time. I was just, I, I don't know how many hours I wasted. I just, half my life was sleeping. It was terrible. But Michaela, she slept all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, she was, I guess I didn't know this, but when she'd go to high school and she could go to high school, I'd get her out of bed. She was always late. But we'd get her out of bed and send her to school, and then she'd go outside and sleep on the grass. The school never told me. She just slept all the time. She couldn't stay awake. Wow. And it would be worse at Christmas when we were eating all the Christmas food, food, all the all the pies and cakes and all of that. Then her she'd be in more distress. And so, but I knew it was food. I mm -hmm. just didn't know what it was. And then one day, see, Julian made me pancakes for breakfast, whole wheat pancakes. And afterwards I was on my computer and I was passing out, but I was managing to stay awake. And then at lunchtime, Michaela made me whole wheat pasta for lunch. And I just passed out like, just like slapped and was out for two or three hours. And I woke up and I thought, it's got to be wheat. So that day I just thought it's got, and I went down to the kitchen and I went through all the cupboards and anything that had wheat on it, I threw out couscous, flour, everything. I threw it all away. And the next morning I wake, woke up and I wasn't tired. Wow. I wasn't tired. And the other thing was, is at about that time I was 40, I was starting to have, I wouldn't say memory loss, but I was starting in a conversation like this, I might have had trouble finding my words, you know. I might have had not been able to remember people's names. Uh, my, I I'd always did well in school. My memory was okay for facts, and mm. but there was definitely changes happening. Mm. And uh, as soon as I really, the next day I wasn't tired. So that was tell, a telltale sign. I knew I'd found a major problem, you know. Mm. And my family, though, cynical. <laughs> well, there was no, there was no understanding, further understanding, except for that I felt better. And they didn't deny that I was feeling better. They admitted I was feeling better. But and in fact, you know, was this going to help arthritis? Probably not. Mm. Like that was the idea. Is this going to help depression? Probably not. Mm. What's going to help depression? Everybody has, lots of people have depression. Just you take know, a pill. Has, yeah. yeah, just take a pill. Yeah. Just, take yeah, a, yeah. just take a pharmaceutical. Yeah. So I lived like that where I would go out and eat chicken and salad while everybody else had burgers and french fries and, you know, good food. Maybe we'd go out and have Lebanese food. And we had, we had, we were in Toronto. We had great restaurants to go to. But all I ever had was chicken salad for like a decade of chicken salad. Uh, You've gone to lamb now. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, I've gone to lamb. But Michaela finally, you know, she went off to university and it didn't go well. She was eating even, she was eating poorly. Hmm. You know, I, I had us eating, well, because I didn't eat, I wouldn't put flour in the gravy anymore. And I, I did limit things because I knew it was bad, and yeah. but I couldn't convince anybody. But little by little, I would kind of pull those toxic foods away as yeah. much as I could. I'd make homemade soup. I wouldn't buy soup that had additives and wheat in it. And I did what I could. But by the time she went off to university, oh, my goodness, she just got so... 
She couldn't even get to her classes. She was in such rough shape. So she, and poor Michaela, she wanted to leave home when she was 16. She was done with us. Like she was, she was wanted to be on her road. And I wanted to leave when I was 12. I get it. I get it. Um, But she came home. She had to come home and let her mom and dad live with her mom and dad again, which was a real defeat for her. Uh, And she went to makeup school, but then she, her wrists hurt so much she couldn't. She was a great makeup artist, but. She couldn't do that. And so then she quit that. And uh, then she decided one day, I took her to a naturopath and they wanted to put an, <laughs> another one uh, on an elimination diet. But they suggested that she eat lemons as part of it. And, and she said to them, you know, I can't eat oranges. Why, why, should I, why could I eat lemons if I can't eat oranges? That just doesn't make any sense to me. So she decided she would do an elimination diet like I wanted, but she would decide what it was going to be. And I think she ate chicken and broccoli for about a month. That's all she ate. And some of her problems started to go away. Wow. And she went, hmm. Like she had uh, skin acne type. Uh, it wasn't acne, but it looked like acne. And it started to clear up. That was, And she thought, oh. Hmm. And we all thought, oh, hmm. And so from there, Michaela went into biomedical research at university. And then she had us all do genetic testing. And that's when I found out I had celiac disease because I have two genes for celiac disease. Oh. So that's when I found out. So she was 22. So I was, um, I was 31, 41, 51. I was now 53. Yeah. And so that's when I knew I had celiac disease. And she said, Mom, you can't have any dairy. And I already knew I pretty much couldn't have any dairy. So I really wasn't eating, because it, it gave me a stomachache. I never had any ice cream or mm-hmm. milkshakes. That always gave me a stomachache. I felt terrible. And I was still eating, I wasn't eating any bread. So, But sometimes, you know, in a salad, they'll put a little bit of cheese. Yeah. And so I was eating that, but it was very minimal. So I stopped doing that. I stopped doing that, and this was very interesting because I went to the gym about an hour, a month after I stopped eating this little bit of cheese. And it's not that I don't have any mirrors in the house, but I just hadn't looked at myself. And I went out into the gym in my shorts and my T-shirt, and I looked, and I felt naked because all the, you know, you're 53, you're going through menopause, so you're going to get a little bit of fat around here and you're going to get a little bit of wobbly under here and you're going to get a little bit of, uh, what do they call that? Uh, Middle-aged spread. <laughs> yeah, you know? So yeah. you're going to get these fat deposits yeah. that every woman gets when she goes through menopause. Well, when I looked in the mirror, they were all gone. Wow. And that was just that little bit of cheese. It wasn't like, you know, I, I really literally... It, I, it was it was no more than a handful of cheese a month, and that was all that went away. So that was quite a shock to me. I thought, no way. A good shock. Yeah, good. <laughs> well, a good shock, but still a shock. Yeah. No way. And it, I mean, I was fifty three. I'd been searching for an answer since I was three years old. This mm. is fifty years of not of trying to understand what was wrong with me, and. So then it was no gluten, no dairy. So that's where I was at that point. And then Michaela was, you know, so she was starting to turn around. So then it was keto, then it was ketogenic. So that's when we went down to eating a lot of sweet potatoes and a lot of sweet potato chips because no more potatoes. Um, and so we were eating sweet potatoes, apples. Oh, and apples. There were apple cores everywhere because everybody was eating so many apples. Apples, sweet potatoes, and then green vegetables. No no oranges, no bananas. Got away all the, got rid of all the sugary things. Mm. And we ate like that f- for some time. And then Michaela got pregnant. And while she was went pregnant, it seemed, if I get this right, that when she ate things other than meat, uh, she didn't feel good. Mm. And when the baby was born, when she started, when she ate other things other than meat, it made the baby unhappy. Wow. So she kept limiting what she was eating. And then I think it was Sean Baker, Dr. Sean Baker, 
messaged her and said, you know, you can just eat meat. And she thought, no way. And we thought, no way. And by then, by then, Jordan and I were, Jordan had done his famous uh, video. And so now he was in the public eye. And we were in Britain. Mm. We were in England. We were in London. And Michaela told me that she had gone back to meet and her depression had lifted. Her depression had lifted. Her arthritis had lifted. Like everything was lifting. Wow. Like completely. And I had arthritis in my knees and my thumbs, so I couldn't go up and down stairs anymore. I thought we were going to have to move to a ranch-style house because I thought I'm not going to be able to go up and down stairs anymore. I'd stopped riding my bike. Um, I, I, I had had tendonitis in my shoulder for since I was 17. I couldn't throw a baseball or a frisbee or play tennis or do front crawl. And then it was getting hard for me to ride my bike because it was hard on my arm to hold the handles. Wow. And then it was hard because my knees when I was riding my bike. So I was just limiting myself more and more and more and more. Is And that is what happens to people. They limit themselves more and more. Their lives get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So my life was getting pretty small. Well, uh, just to, to reflect for a minute. So, I mean, most people will assume that they get the middle age spread we talked about. Most people will assume you get older, you know, you're just going to disintegrate. This is just what we are taught and brought up with. So what's interesting to me and why I wanted to interview you was because you and Jordan and Michaela just seem to be getting more and more bouncy and kind of energetic. And Seems and like we're getting younger. It does. You know, Jordan and I, you guys, we're at home and we whisper, good. we whisper to each other, you know what? I think we're getting younger. I mean, that doesn't happen. Like gum disease doesn't get better. Arthritis doesn't just go away. Depression doesn't just Lift. evaporate. We're, you know, eyesight doesn't get better. Your skin, skin doesn't get tighter. You know, you know how you see on people sometimes it's like on people on women's bums often they have kind of a cottage cheesy kind of Fat? Yes, I can't possibly call my beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, cellulite. That's, mm. They call it cellulite. That's inflammation. Is it? Because now after five years of being carnivore, I don't have that anymore. Wow. You know? You know and now I'm in my 60s. Be going carnivore <laughs> after this. I know. It's, it, <laughs> it's shocking. It was. It's shocking to me the changes that we have found. We never expected. Michaela didn't think her depression would lift. Mm. We had no, you know... We had no hopes that we could make any changes as far as depression went. We were hoping maybe for arthritis would lift and maybe her skin would heal. But, you know, I think depression will come when you're in pain all the time. I mean, why wouldn't you feel depressed if you start to stop feeling right. you, I mean, there's a natural progression there. And also I would say there's something about um, the type of meat. So it's not just any old meat. No, it isn't it any old be, meat has to because, be. you know, if you eat, fish mm. you can kind of taste what the fish ate mm. so you know people oh, i don't want to eat farm-fed fish it doesn't taste right it's because you can taste what the animals and chicken you can taste what a chicken and so that's why they're always talking about how everybody all the animals have to be free range and we have because we're feeding them the wrong things we're always feeding the animals the wrong things mm. and maybe that's true mm. and maybe that's mm. true but that's not the major problem in our society because I can eat uh, and my husband can eat. We don't have to eat, uh, what do you call that, organic? Mm. Organic meat. No. We don't have to, actually. Um, and now, but I do have to eat meat from ruminant animals. So I, I need to eat meat that comes from an animal that has multiple stomachs so that by the time the food is all digested, then all I get and all that's in the animal that we eat of their meat is uh, nutrients. So it doesn't even have to be grass-fed? No. Huh? Okay. I know. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. And maybe we'll find out later that maybe, yes, it does have to be grass-fed. But that's not what our research shows. No. Um, you know, I have other troubles because I have lupus. Mm. I have lupus. Mm. I have 
secondary Sjogren's disease. Sjogren's, what's that? It's arthritis of the mucous membranes. My aunt died when her lungs dried up. That's Sjogren's. That's why I have to use eye drops because my eyes dry. But I'm on no medication. Mm. Lupus, what do people do all the time? They sleep all Mm. the time. I have a half an hour nap in the day and I'm good. That's amazing. It's amazing, you know. And I have uh, Raynaud's. Oh, yeah. Right? Circulation. I have, uh, what do you call that? Rosacea, Mm. which isn't as bad. And it would be bad. If I was eating a normal diet, I'd have very, very red skin. And I have makeup on to cover it because I don't like it but I hardly really I could go without makeup I could because it's just a little red now it's no it's no big deal I've not noticed and I've seen you without makeup I've never yeah, noticed right, that right yeah. right so I have so you know they call these diseases autoimmune diseases just like they call inflammatory problems arthritis that means we don't know what it is it's inflammatory mm-hmm. we don't know what it is it's got something to do they think with your immune system And I'm not a doctor. Maybe it does. But all I know is all those diseases look like they're linked because I have lots of them. Mm. I have osteoarthritis, lupus, Sjogren's, Raynaud's. uh, I'm probably missing a few. But, you know, I just keep stacking up Mm. the diseases. Mm. And but I still have no symptoms like my knees are my shoulder when I before. The year, the summer before I went on carnivore, so I was eating meat and salad. So mm. I was down to lettuce, uh, apple cider vinegar, olive oil, olives. Um, oh, I love olives. Oh, I love olives. I think that on cucumbers. Don't tell me we can't have olives. <laughs> no, you can't have olives. I tried olives. No, you can't have uh. olives. Anyway, so I was eating that and meat, and I still, my knees weren't working. And my shoulder, I was back crawl. So I could do this with this arm, and this one I could do like that. <laughs> I'd just swim in a circle, you know, because I couldn't move. I couldn't move my arm. It, it didn't work anymore. And from the time I was 17, I had bicep tendinitis. Now, my arms are oh, look at that. perfect. Amazing. They're perfect. I have nothing wrong with them. This isn't something that I did. I didn't. Uh, this isn't a uh, a work related problem. This is it's inflammation. Like maybe I don't know. I was a curler. I curled nationally. Maybe I strained this. I was an athlete. I was a baseball player. You know, I was a tennis player. Maybe I strained it mm-hmm. when I was young, and because of all the inflammation, more inflammation went there. Mm-hmm. But it never got better. I mean, it got. I went. To physios, I, I did all kinds of remedial exercises. And you did see that wonderful osteopath. Oh yeah, he couldn't fix my shoulder either. Okay, interesting. But he did fix a lot of other things. Other things. Yeah. Well, listen, I want to interrupt you for a minute because I I'm very interested by your spiritual journey as well. Obviously, with my my dog collar on. Yes. Uh, as a reverend. Yes. Um, and one of the things that you've told me that I'd love you to share with the listeners was how you. Because you also take a few supplements as well, don't you? Uh, just a couple. But but the, the tell me but about one the one in particular. Yeah, t- tell me that. Tell them that story. Okay, yeah, I'll right. tell you that story. And I want to start off by saying I know that God was there all along, guiding me in this direction and guiding Michaela and guiding Jordan, like guiding all of us. Mm-hmm. Um, but and I think you know, and I must have been listening a little bit because I did find my way forward slowly. But now I'm really praying like every morning and really every morning and I pray the rosary and it takes me I don't know 20 minutes or so you know to pray the rosary uh, and and I'm grateful for the challenges <laughs> and I have to say that because it's I have to be grateful for the challenges that come my way and and that's not easy mm. right you that's really not easy to feel gratitude when you're challenged but um But that means it's a lesson to learn. And I do feel that we are a puzzle to ourselves and that we're finding the pieces. But the way to find the pieces for me, I've found, is to listen Mm. to God. And so I've been practicing listening and asking, what do you want from me today? Because I surely don't know. I know. I tried. I was was orchestrating my future. And look where it ended me in the hospital and 
killed me, really nearly killed me when I had cancer, right? So mm. I know that my plans did not work. Mm. They didn't work. And so I know that for sure. I've, it's been pounded home. And I know I'm obstinate, but I did learn a lesson. And so now I listen. And so this has been very interesting. So I, I still have trouble. I can only eat lamb. I can, you know, and I've been on tour with my husband. And finding lamb all over the world is, I have to have like three guys looking for lamb while I travel with my husband because it's we have to take lamb, get lamb from the store and take it to the butcher in the, or take it to the chef in the restaurant and say, please cook this because I can't eat anything on the menu. You know, it's, uh, it's crazy. It's not without its difficulties, we'll put it like that. That's for sure. So, uh, so I've been praying uh, to find out what was wrong because when I eat, even though I'm only eating lamb, I have to use the bathroom as soon as I eat. And so you can't be on trains, planes, and automobiles if you're going to be in the bathroom all the time. And But I did. I traveled all of 2018, but in total discomfort. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was just really very trying. It was, And that was before I had cancer, right? So, yeah. And I thought maybe what I was suffering from had something to do with having cancer. cancer. But turns out, that God told me otherwise. So I was just home one day. I don't know where I was, on tour. I don't know where I was. But this voice in my head said, histamines, look up histamines. Okay, so I look up histamines. Huh, people with histamine intolerance have a runny nose when they eat. My mom had a runny nose so all the mine. time. Mine, mine, still does. Yeah, I have a runny nose. I thought it was from taking all that morphine when I was sick. My nose is so runny. Like it was maybe a little runny before. Not now it's just runny all the time. Um, migraines, I don't have any migraines. Uh, irritable bowel syndrome, definitely. I definitely have that, but that's celiac disease. So I thought I had that all figured out because I thought, oh, okay. But my digestion never got better, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, so in the same Google search, I found these supplements that are an enzyme and and then looked up histamine intolerance. Turns out you can be lacking a gene for digesting histamines. Wow. Oh, well, maybe I'm maybe I inherited this from my mother. Maybe I am lacking this gene for histamines. And maybe if I take this enzyme, I'll be better. So I ordered the enzymes. You know, just completely. Well, th the thing is, I've been listening, and so I didn't even really know I was listening. Now I've been listening long enough that I just listen. And I just trust that what I'm hearing is what I need to hear. And so I ordered them and I started taking them. And I would say for the first week, I didn't feel any better. But then I actually started to feel better and I wasn't going to the bathroom all the time after I ate. Mm. And so then I thought, hmm, maybe there's something to this. So then I looked more at the enzymes and because uh, my digest digestion was still not great. It was better. And you can get different strengths. So now I take like mega strength enzyme five to 15 minutes before I eat. And I have a normal life. For the first time in my life, I can be around people, enjoy my time, uh, travel a distance in comfort, be happy, have a memory, you know, praise God, praise God. That's right. And so that's why I wanted to have this conversation with you is, is because there, by following my, what I thought was my intuition, but turned out to be God. Um, my prayers have been answered. My daughter is well. Amazing. My son's going to travel with us and sing and play guitar, which was my dream for him. Cause I, always thought he had a perfect voice and so I you know nurtured that in him when he was a child uh, my my husband has no more depression he has no more uh, gastric reflux mm. he, he has no more gum disease he has his vision is good his mind is clear he has a message for the world and he can and he deliver can go it. out there and deliver it so no pun intended but your gut instinct was right <laughs> There you, there you go. go. 
And Thank I, you for that. No, you're welcome. <laughs> and I, I do think there is something um, to be said for, I mean, one of the other reasons I was interested in, because I had cancer too, as you know. Right. I had a breast cancer. Yeah. And I went to the doctors afterwards. And because I did already not think they were God, because my mother was one, a yeah. good one, by the way. I don't, yeah. want to, I don't want to be rude about doctors. I think they are wonderful. If I broke my arm, I'd want a doctor, you know. So, But they don't know everything. And I remember afterwards I was really being pressured to have a drug which I looked into, uh, which the hospital said, you should really take this. It won't come back. And I said, oh, it says 1.6. I said, that's like one in 100, maybe. You're right. And the woman said, I said, that's average is pretty low for this drug. And it's going to give me all these things like, you know, perimenopausal, right, and premature right. arthritis, possibly. And like there was a whole list of things that you might get. And I was like, oh, I don't know about this. And then I, like you, had a, a God moment. I prayed. And a guy who had leukemia, actually, who had been helping me with something, wrote and said, oh, have you heard of the keto diet? Oh, wow. And I said, I no. He that. said, I said, what, what is it? And he said, oh, this guy, yeah, Dr. Josh Axe, he said, he's got a book. And I, and I looked it up and it had an avocado on the front. I thought, well, I like avocados. I yeah. can do avocados. Yeah. I mean, I haven't given up as much as you do. And, you know, I just thought it says if you eliminate milk, 50% less likely for me to get my breast cancer back. Okay. So I thought, well, that milk. Sounds, that's, yeah, that sounds a bit better than uh, taking these weird pills with a 1.6 average, which yes. they then said, oh, no, it's 1.8. I was like, oh, wow, so it's <laughs> nearly two people. So I thought, well, and then they said, and give up alcohol. That be that would be good. That's yeah. another, you know, big one. Yeah. And and I thought, and I could still eat cheese. I still eat cheese. But I, but I'm, 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 I'm thinking about this. And so I decided to just do it, go for it. And you know, I, I, I am not as disciplined as you. But for those two months before my 50th birthday, I really went for it. I lost weight. I felt better. I was more energetic. And I thought, this is the answer. That so, And I'm never hungry. This yeah. whole idea, you have to starve your body of things. You do. Yes. No, you're you never don't. hungry. We haven't talked about that. But the key no, you're is never to hungry. never let yourself get hungry. Yeah. When you first change, and I didn't change the diet from like a North American diet, no, you have to diet. gradually, otherwise it was your body's over shot. twenty years for yeah. me. Yeah. But if people do that really, really fast, they get something called a Herx reaction, and mm. it's a flu, yeah. and it's nasty. So yeah. the best thing to do is to cut out gluten and dairy first. Yeah. If you have any chronic disease mm. that you can't understand and can't get an answer from, mm. so you haven't managed it. And it's still plaguing you. Even things that you think, well, I'm getting older, so my knees are going to hurt. Mm. Oh, my eyes, are, my sight is going to go. My hearing is going to go. Like all these things. Those are chronic diseases. Mm. You don't, you think, oh, that's called aging. Well, is it? Mm, mm. I'm not sure. Yeah. So, like, I'm really not sure. Mm. And so if you have something chronic, then you start by eliminating gluten and dairy mm. and, like, you get rid of all the sugar in your mm. in your diet, and especially for cancer because cancer mm. grows on, sugar. on carbohydrates. Yeah, totally does. And carbohydrates that means everything that isn't a fat or a protein. Everything else is a carbohydrate. That's all fruit, all vegetables, mm. all grains, all glucose of any kind because it's a different metabolism ketogenic diet. It means mm. a ketone diet which means that you're switching from one metabolism to another. You're not in the glucose metabolism anymore. Mm. That's what gives you this Herx reaction because you're switching mm. from a glucose metabolism of every cell in your body to a mm. ketogenic mm. metabolism, and that's different. So mm. it takes a while for your body to switch over, and in that time, you don't feel so good. That's why you do it a little, a little at a time. time. Yeah, in fact, I, I, with mine, I took a lot of supplements. I was quite careful so that it, it didn't, um, you know, I was really careful about the things like collagen that you can take that so just eased you into things. Right, right. And I haven't gone total meat. So, you know, ev everybody is different, I suppose. But, you know, there are some things I can eat. But I do know, for example, when I have alcohol again, which I do sometimes have, um, that if I have a slightly runny nose the next day, that's because I'm probably not meant to be really drinking. I yeah. mean, it's not good for you. I'm afraid, with ladies, over 50, alcohol has zero benefits, I'd love to say, other than having a nice time with a girlfriend, which may have a benefit of its own. 
Yes, um, that's right. But but I do also think as well that looking at your uh, extreme version of it, um, it clearly has, you know, the the more you're willing to go, the, the better it probably is. But. Yeah, and people think, oh, and you know, I understand this, but people, oh, you lose so much because what about entertaining? I you know, it's been, it's been, it took me a number of years, but this Christmas I made a, I cooked a completely normal Christmas dinner, dinner for everyone. I bought all the groceries and, you know, and all the desserts and all of that. And hardly anybody ate any of the desserts. And I threw away most of the vegetables because when people come to my house, they think meat. Yeah, Let's yeah. eat meat. Yeah, I right? know they do. James comes and goes, Where's the steak? Yeah. My husband, when he comes <laughs> That's through right. the door. That's and right. actually, I do think there is something very relaxing. I mean, I certainly know when I did the keto where you can have avocados and blueberries. So there are things some people can eat. Um, nobody noticed I didn't have the French fries. Right. I just had everything else everyone else did, but without the French fries. Yeah. And that is totally a way yeah. we can do it. And, so. you know, if you think, Oh, I'm. Uh, no one will invite me out anymore because my diet is strange or uh, I'm going to offend people if I invite them over and we don't have. That's just you. That are, Those are your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Have you asked your guests if it offends them? Because you know what? It doesn't. They mm -hmm. don't care. No. Nobody cares. And I can still have coffee. I can tell you there's yeah. a delicious coffee here. And I, <laughs> I just have it with almond milk. That hasn't really, you right. know. You don't have to have There are other options for things out and, there. And you know, and the other thing that was really interesting, Michaela had this little girl. And of course, she had mainly meat. That's what she grew up with. She had no tantrums. She had no pain when she got her teeth. Wow. Her teeth showed up in her mouth. We didn't even, we didn't even notice she was getting teeth. Th this, you know, like we don't know what all of this sugar and no nappy rash, you said either. No nappy rash? Yeah. No, never. Amazing. And she's you she's delightful. Scarlett, mm -hmm. you you played with her. Isn't she a delightful she's human lovely. being? I don't really I'm I she's lovely. <laughs> I'm not gonna go into saying I don't like children. I have two of my own that I love. But you know how some people are really baby people. I'm more of probably a puppy dog person. I love dogs. <laughs> but she's a special little girl. So and and yeah, yeah. and she she's excellent. So I mean I think I think a ketogenic diet is the way to go. And, you know, if, if you have trouble, you go back to a ketogenic diet. If that doesn't work, mm. if you're still having symptoms, and I did, right, right till I got rid of the salad. So you could limit and go back to meat and then start adding in things. But you have to stay with meat for a number of months mm. because you will have no idea whether the symptoms are going to abate. Really, my knees, I think they took two years to get better. Really? Yeah, yeah and my thumbs... They're still not that better, but you know, they're tiny little joints. And so, and I was a massage therapist, wow. so I used them a lot. And so I think maybe, you know, some of these things that you have, uh, they're bellwethers for me. If I have something I shouldn't, I'll feel it in my thumbs right away. Mm -hmm. And I can tell that I, I should, because I've tried chocolate. I've tried honey. I've tried coffee. I can have a coffee actually about once a month. Right. But who has a coffee once, once a, month? a month? Nobody. Yeah, you want no, to have no. a coffee every day. Yeah. yeah. Every morning. So I sure do. <laughs> so it doesn't so it doesn't work for me. And yeah. I could probably have a chalk one square of a chocolate. Very dark chocolate. Very dark chocolate every month. Mm. But nobody does that. No. So I just don't have any of that. Because it would drive me crazy. Yeah. And the thing is, I don't crave anything. Once your metabolism switches from glucose to ketones, you don't crave sugar. So yeah. there can be a whole a whole uh, table full of beautiful display of fruits and vegetables and sugars uh, of every type, like um, pies and cakes and and chocolates and stuff. And I don't crave any of it. Ice cream. I don't crave any of it because my metabolism is ketone now because there's no sugar in my diet. And so my body isn't screaming for more sugar. And the thing is, when your metabolism is glucose, you need to constantly feed that. So, mm. so your body is telling you to get more sugar all the time. Whereas you eat a steak in the morning, you know that sustains you. You know, we know that from metabolism that proteins last a lot longer in your system so it sustains you until late in the day when you have another one and then and then you're good and you're not even hungry at night but you know there's ways we have these carnivore chips that we my my daughter's been buying chuck roasts 
bought a meat slicer, slices them very thin, puts them on drying racks in the oven for three to four hours at 200, and makes her own jerky. And it's delicious. I bet. Because she can't tolerate any histamines at all, and she can't take these enzymes that I'm taking. Wow. And she has this histamine intolerance as well. I know so many people who have it. My, my nephew told me he's had migraines since he was a baby. He definitely can't eat dairy products and never does. But I told him about the supplements. And then I contacted him and I said, how's it going? Well, not very well. Well, how much are you taking? Well, he's taking the 10,000 HDU. I said, well, I take the 30,000 HDU and I double it. So I take 60,000. He said, oh, okay, I'll try it again and use more. And thanks for your help. Because if he can fix his migraine headaches and his uh, IBS symptoms, he's a young man with te yeah. teeny little kids. Yeah. You know, I want people, young people to have good lives mm. and they can have good lives. And everybody says, oh, the carnivore diet is so expensive to eat meat. Yeah, it's also expensive to be sick mm. and not be, like I'm energetic, I can have a podcast, talk for a, quite a long time and not lose my train of thought and wear out. Mm. And Yeah, and actually I would say there are ways of doing it that are less expensive. Yeah. You know, mince is still meat. And in fact, yes. sometimes it has the other things. You don't have to have steak. You no. can you can get so you can look into doing it slightly cheaper. There that's are ways right. of doing it slightly cheaper. And some people like me can have avocados and blueberries and it yes, doesn't seem to right. affect me. So you, it doesn't have to be but the point is getting rid of those major carbohydrates like Absolutely. your rice is your all those things. The rice and, the and, dairy, the potatoes, and the dairy. I mean the and dairy. The dairy, yeah, yeah. the dairy and the gluten and the big uh carbohydrates. Yeah. Well, look, you look fabulous. Why, thank you, my dear. So do you. Uh, and I can't believe you are the age you are. I, I, I will, um, I'm, I'm amazed. So, um, and I hope everybody listening has um, got something out of it. And I thought we might end by saying my favorite prayer together. Yes, let's do that. So I thought we'd do the Jesus prayer. If that's okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So, um, and I'm just going to explain briefly that this is a prayer of, uh, it's an Orthodox prayer. They play, pray it in the monasteries. They do it collectively. So it's a prayer that we can pray together. And at home, you can welcome to join. And I'm just going to do it 10 times. And you always start and end with Christ. And I suppose that to me has been the journey of my faith is I am like... Um, Tammy trying to fail towards, if you like, my father loved that term, love. So we may not always get there every day, but we try. And so this prayer does have the word sinner in it that some people find that hard to take, but actually it's quite relaxing thinking of yourself as somebody who hasn't quite made it to heaven yet. So you are still sinful, but God loves you anyway, which is why you always end on Jesus Christ because we are enfolded into his love. And the prayer is, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And the mercy means unfold me in your loving arms. That God's mercy is a, a, a an act of grace. We don't deserve it. We are sinners, and yet he has mercy. So it's a circular prayer. And um, and I pray it with my prayer rope, but I've left my prayer rope in my other pocket. But w w you can do it um, with a prayer rope or just with your hands. And uh, I, it does every 10, 10 times it has a bead and where you can think. So you can go and get a prayer rope or you can just do it as we're going to do it today. So Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, Tommy.